there, and today we're going to talk about New Year's Eve in Denmark and what you can expect. Stay tuned. Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. And specifically, my very first New Year's Eve here in Denmark was in 2007. And I have been spending quite a few of my New Year's in Denmark ever since. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about what goes on, what happens during New Year's Eve in Denmark. Before we get started with that, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you as a new subscriber. If you've been coming along and watching my videos and you haven't quite committed to clicking on that red button, please make today be that day. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a little tradition that they do every New Year's Eve on the island of Owls in the small town where my husband grew up. It's a village of around a thousand people. And it's not something that I've experienced in any other part of Denmark. And I would love to know if you're Danish, if you have this where you live please let me know. But that'll be at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Now I'm gonna go through a few things that you might need or you might expect to see on your New Year's Eve in Denmark this year. Number one, fireworks. Fireworks actually start any time after Christmas. In fact, I would say the day after Christmas, I heard and saw some outside of my kitchen window. People are just lighting them off. Usually throughout the month of December, you will find these booths set up. There's some that are set up in front of bigger stores. They could be set up outside of your town in a tent kind of situation where you can go and buy your own fireworks. These can be like the really big ones that go up into the sky and sparkle all the way down. They can be sparklers. They can be something that you light on fire and spins around, smokestacks. Lots and lots of different things. So when you think of fireworks, pretty much what you're thinking of can be bought at one of these stands. And people may be lighting them off anytime after Christmas up until New Year's, but usually on New Year's Eve at midnight, that's when you will see the most fireworks. And it's insane. You know, when I think of fireworks in the United States, I think of the 4th of July. We don't normally do fireworks any other time of year, and it's very regulated. You can't buy fireworks in every single state. Some states sell them. Some states allow them. Um, if you have your own fireworks and you light them off, you could get in trouble if, you know, you haven't gotten the permission to do it. So there's a lot of kind of red tape, and we usually only do it around 4th of July. Yes, of course, on New Year's Eve, you'll see fireworks displays in a lot of big cities all throughout the world, especially if you're watching something on TV. See a lot of fireworks, you know, you, they would show you the fireworks displays in different parts of the, of the world. And so I know it's a really big thing, but in the U.S. where I lived, I lived in a town of about 200,000 people, and I wouldn't say that it was very popular. It's usually pretty cold where I lived in the winter time. I mean, in the negative degrees, it was very cold. So people being outside, you know, I guess it wasn't very of an exciting thing. I don't know. I spent many New Year's Eves in the United States and I wouldn't say that I spent really any of them outside. But on New Year's Eve in Denmark, every New Year's Eve in Denmark, at midnight, we go outside to check out the fireworks, and they're everywhere. It's not that you go to a, a, a central location and then see the fireworks display. It's whoever wants to go out and buy fireworks and light them off, that's where you're going to see them. So we might actually take a walk in our neighborhood around like 8 o'clock or something, and there would be fireworks because somebody decided that's when they want to do theirs. Maybe they have small children. I don't know. But then we could see them all different times throughout the night because people decide to light them off whenever they feel like it. But the majority of the ones that you're going to see are on New Year's Eve at midnight. And it's so interesting because like, we could walk down to the end of our street where, the, where people gather to 
let out their their fireworks and you could almost just turn around in a circle and you would see fireworks from every direction it really blows fourth of july out of the water if you ask me it is so much better than fourth of july because they're everywhere <laughs> number two is food. I know a lot of times it might be like a baked fish, um, it might be some type of kale or cabbage, and usually potatoes. Potatoes are for like every meal here in Denmark. For some reason we always seem to have some type of sausage. Maybe it's just my husband's personal preference and since I'm a vegetarian it doesn't really matter to me, but we tend to have sausage it seems when we get to choose what to make for food. I've had New Year's where we have had different things. Maybe we've had tartaletta, which is kind of like a chicken pot pie in a way. But instead of having all the vegetables, it's really just chicken and white asparagus. And that's what you would put in these little cups and you, we would eat those. I don't know if that's a regional thing, if that's like a personal preference thing, but I know a lot of New Year's Eve's we've had tartaletta. For me, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat that. So I have one that's just peas and carrots, you know, kind of like in a, like, like in a, you know, like cream of celery soup kind of thing, but with like peas and carrots. I don't know. Then um, there would also be this consequea at midnight, and then maybe you would drink champagne with that. So for us, we would have adult champagne, but we would also get kids champagne. And this is non-alcoholic children's champagne. And this is what we're going to be drinking, or the kids will be drinking this year for New Year's. And it's something that you just pick up at the store, right? No big deal. And that's what you're going to open up on New Year's, you know, Happy New Year, get your bubbly out, and then you're going to eat your kransake. And the kransake are really quite something. Um, it's made out of marzipan. I'm not a big marzipan fan, but I like to go with tradition so I will I will eat it but it's so pretty the way that they make these it's so interesting it's not like anything that I have seen anywhere else in the US for example number three is kind of the party favors kind of the uh, explosives and the things that you would have on your table so one of those would be like streamers and streamers kind of come undone as you throw them. So I might throw this and then it will start to unravel and then the pieces would kind of go all over. And then you could take the pieces and hang them in different places and, and do some decorations. That's something that's really fun. I don't really know um, if we use anything like this in the US. I, I didn't even know how to use it when I had my first New Year's here. So that's something that I'd really love to hear from other people. Is this something that you have seen where you just kind of throw these, you know, at the table and whatever? Let me know about that. Um, another one that we always use are sparklers. People actually use sparklers inside, which I think is crazy. We take these outside. Another thing that is a must, which is kind of dangerous, <laughs> not really, are these little um, party bombs. And here they have the confetti that comes out here. So if you pull on the string, woo, it has a little gunpowder thing on the inside. And some of these colorful streamers come out. And you might do that up in the air and then have them kind of fall down. Or we have lights over our table. So it could be that the these get stuck in the lights and everything. Um, but these are a lot of fun. I know that my boys love these. They give you a little spark, a little bit of uh, a little bit of noise, and yeah, it's it's really fun to have these. There might be some other ones that are maybe a little bit bigger, or and they have a little bit more stuff in them. I don't know. But then you can get these little paper crowns to put on. And those are a lot of fun. There's a lot of different things that you can buy. Uh, normally, if you go to the grocery store, you can buy them all in a pack. So there's like some New Year's Eve pack with all these streamers and then like the party bombs and things like that. So that way you would have them all. And you could put them all on your table when you're doing your decorating. You know, putting your plates and everything out and getting everything looking nice. And then all those are there for 
the guests that you have, the people. Maybe it's just you and your family. So those are a lot of fun. Before all those festivities get started, one thing that you don't ever want to miss if you are in Denmark, especially if you are a Dane, is the Queen's Speech. So the Queen will give her speech at 6 p.m. where she sits down at a desk and there's a video camera on her and she's got these cards and she's reading from her cards. I know it's very special for my husband. When we lived in the U.S., he still wanted to watch the Queen's speech. It was something that, you know, because he says, oh, there's a part in it where she talks about the Danes who aren't living in Denmark right now. And, you know, and he's like, she's talking to me. And I really think that's cute. And we watch we watch that every year on TV. We don't live in Copenhagen. We don't live near Copenhagen. Um, but if you are in Copenhagen, you can go and see the changing of the guards. And right um, after that happens, then the queen gives her speech. But she gives her speech inside. So if you're going to see the guards, then you're not able to see her speech. So... Yeah, but we watch it all on TV so we don't miss a thing. That's one thing that you definitely, you know, will sit through. It doesn't take forever to listen to her speech, but she talks about the things that have happened over the course of the year. She talks about maybe some issues that are going on right now in the world and in Denmark. And she just gives kind of some well wishes for the next year. And it's really a nice thing to have because as an American, we don't have a queen. In Denmark, they have a prime minister and then they have the queen, right? So in the US, we just have a president. The only princes and princesses that we have in, in the US are from Disney. And I think, you know, every girl has this idea of growing up to be a princess kind of thing. So the idea of having a queen and listening to her give a speech every year, I think that's pretty cool. Another thing that happens at the stroke of 12 that is pretty famous here in Denmark is the town hall clock in Copenhagen will ding. And you can see if you Google this, if you're not in Copenhagen, but if you go to Copenhagen, that's kind of the area you want to be. That's the Times Square, I guess, of Copenhagen. Times Square is where everything happens in New York on New Year's Eve. And the town hall in Copenhagen is where everything happens on New Year's Eve. So that's where a lot of the fireworks will be. You know, it's right next to Tivoli, the amusement park. So you could see like all the beautiful lights and everything. And I mean, it's just like lit up without, with the amount of lights that they have. But then you will also hear the dinging of the clock. Like in the US, we always watch the ball drop. The ball in um, Times Square in New York City. We have a lot of different time zones in the United States. So it could be that um, we're watching the ball drop um, later, you know, because it might happen in New York and then it'll happen again four hours later in, in California or something. So it would be a played on repeat. One other thing that, that happens at this time is that on TV, so if you're kind of watching all this from TV, you'll hear um, the Danish New Year song that is played on TV. So there is a special choir that sings uh, on TV that will go through and sing the song and it's a very beautiful one. One thing that I really want to recommend to you if you are living in Denmark on New Year's Eve is to pay attention to your belongings on New Year's Eve. We live in a house, which means we have a mailbox. Many times, mailboxes will get blown up by local teenagers. That's just something that people expect. So, I mean, if your mailbox gets blown up, it's probably not going to be the top thing on the police's, you know, agenda. We better go out and find those mailbox, you know, vandalizers or whatever. So my suggestion to you is to take down your mailbox before New Year's Eve. So it's New Year's Eve day. It's before the Queen's speech, before you get ready to have your supper and everything. Sometime during the day, take down your mailbox and put it away. That way you don't have to worry about somebody blowing it up. Do people actually do this? Do people actually take it down? Yes. You could walk down my street and not find a mailbox on New Year's Eve because people do not want to have to go out and buy a brand new mailbox. And I don't blame them. 
Also, if you've got your bikes out and they're not locked up or you've got other things. And I mean, in Denmark, we don't always lock things up, right? You might not, you might have a carport, but not a garage. And you just don't expect people to go in and steal things, right? Because that, it's Denmark. People don't do that. You might want to make sure you're putting some things away or you're locking things up or something because, and I don't want to blame it on teenagers because I don't know who's doing it, but it tends to be local teenagers or kids or whatever, younger people who feel the need to go out and do these crazy things. So just be on the safe side and think, if I were a crazy teen, perhaps, <laughs> what would what would I take or what would I vandalize? So just be aware. Now we get to the part at the end of the video where I tell you a little bit about an experience that I've had in my husband's little village where he grew up. Now, my husband grew up on the Island of Owls, which is a small island near the German border. So he is a Southern Dane. We live in Mitjuland now, which is the middle of the peninsula. So I wouldn't, you know, even though we're only like two and a half hours from where he grew up, it's still a very different type of area with different customs and traditions and things. I know that what I'm about to tell you is not something that I've experienced where I live now in Denmark. I have actually not heard about it or seen it in other parts. Well, on New Year's Eve, a lot of the children who live in this village will go around to houses. They will knock on the doors and all the kids have these protective glasses whenever they're doing anything with fireworks. And that is so important. So if you have not went out and bought your you know, protective goggles, make sure you do that. Adults and children need to make sure that they're protecting themselves whenever they're doing anything with fireworks. So please be safe on here's Eve. But the children will come around and I would say that they're not like, they're not like toddlers or anything. These are, these are bigger kids, right? And they would have the protective goggles on and they would have like a small firework and they would light the firework right there in front of the house while the person is standing at the door. You know, they knock, knock, I open the door, and then they say, Happy New Year, and then they light the little firework or whatever, and then you give them candy. So in a way, it's a lot like trick or treat, where they, but it's not trick or treat, it's trick and treat. <laughs> And it's not like it's a trick against you. It's not like, ah, oh, I'm gonna do a trick, I'm gonna throw it at your face. It's nothing dangerous. They're, they're performing a trick for you with this little firework that, you know, you get to enjoy. And I, I always really love that. It's not always the, you know, the kids with the tricks because when we experienced this, you know, of course it's a village where my husband grew up, so he knew a lot of people there. And my little boys, they would put on these hats and we put them in their Seba Casabio, which is their soapbox car that my father-in-law made for them. And we'd pull them around the neighborhood and we'd go to a very selected few homes and we'd knock on the door and they would give candy. So it was very similar to trick or treat. And I don't know, that's just really kind of an interesting thing. It was just really sweet um, to do with my kids because it was something that my husband grew up doing and that he got to share that with his kids too. It's not anything that I've ever experienced outside of those few times that we were there for New Year's, um, New Year's Eve. And if so, if you're Danish and you do something similar to that, let me know. Also, in that area where my husband is from, they also do something for January 6th, though I know I'm getting a little bit off topic with that, but I'm not gonna make a video just for January 6th, just for one little thing that happens in my husband's like little village area. Um, they have the, the adults dress up and they do like an adult trick or treat kind of thing where they go around knocking on doors and instead of getting candy, they get shots, <laughs> you know, like, the alcoholic drink. We have not experienced that because we've never stayed in Denmark long enough to be here on the 6th because we would always have to go back to work on like the 3rd or the 4th or whatever. So I've never gotten to experience that. My husband though has. And so that's also something that he says it's very regional. It's very much of like 
I think it's called, um, it's not a holiday we, we celebrate as Americans unless um, you come from maybe certain Catholic backgrounds. I think a lot of Mexican Americans celebrate this and it's like the, the Day of the Three Kings or something like that. Yeah, I don't know how that all started with adults dressing up and going around and knocking on doors and getting shots. Um, but I'd be really interested to know if you have experienced anything like that if you're Danish and where you live. Um, I think a lot of these traditions like this one that, that happens with New Year's Eve and the kids going around and getting candy in that small town, I don't think that that's something that's happening that much anymore. I think a lot of the people who live in that village are older. They're all um, grandparents. And so the newer families who are coming to live in that village, they didn't grow up there. So they're not used to that tradition. So they're not carrying it on with their children. So I think it's something that might actually be dying out in that town. But I would love to know if you have any traditions of your own right now that you're going to be celebrating this year or every year from now on, or ones that you remember celebrating in Danish New Year's past that you don't do anymore. Please let me know about those in the comments. If you are interested in knowing more about um, some of our experiences here living in Denmark, I have a section on my blog. I'm going to put the link in the description so you can check that out of some of the crazy experiences that I have had a little bit with culture shock and, and the like of what life has been like for me since moving to Denmark. Thanks for coming along on this video. If I forgot anything, let me know. New Year's is a few days away, so it's been almost a whole year since I've had a New Year's here in Denmark, and I don't think I've forgotten anything, but maybe I have, and you'll have to let me know. Put it down in the comments below, and you can share it there. Thanks for coming along on this video with me. Thank you so much to my subscribers. I really appreciate every single one of you. At this point in time, I have 11,600. I am so blessed to have so many people follow me along on my journey, and I would love to have you along as well if you are not a subscriber yet. I can't wait to see you in another video, and I really hope you have a fantastic New Year's Eve. As always, Take care.